Hey everybody, this is Time Rider. Hey, you know, I, I don't participate in a lot of builds, usually just the three blind mice and maybe the occasional charity build, but I actually bought this casting. It's uh, Hot Wheels called Holland Gas. And I bought it and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it beyond just sort of a, mm, a general sense. And then uh, being as it was Christmas time, uh, I decided, well, hey, I'll do a Christmas thing on it. And there it just naturally led to, gee, I remember somebody ask, asking me if I wanted to do a, a Christmas build, or maybe it was Paul uh, telling me that he was going to do it. But at any rate, so uh, I decided to uh, ask if I could be a part of that build, and they graciously allowed me to do it. And so I'm going to take this uh, Batman thing and uh, turn it into something kind of Christmassy, so stick around. Well, it was a real nice casting, uh, you know, it had a metal base instead of plastic, which is always nice. Uh, it was already drilled and tapped, so uh, all I had to do was take the screws out of it. Uh, like I say, those uh, wheels and tires are, are pretty slick. Uh, Hot Wheels started making this in 2011, and they used it largely for promotionals. Um, but they did a few other things with it, and... Uh, yeah, they're still making it now in 2020. They're still releasing versions of it. I'm not sure about the big Batman thing. That really doesn't look like any kind of a Batmobile. I uh, had a interior that was attached to uh, that other portion of plastic, but uh, didn't take much and it was ready to go in the goo. I uh, had put a post on my community page and one of the people suggested that the casting was uh, made after the Future Liner, which was a concept vehicle of General Motors back in the day. Um, but nope, sorry, not the case. It was actually modeled after the 1933 Texaco Diamond T Doodle Bug, which was a streamlined tanker, kind of like that Lesney one, uh, the, the major pack one. But uh, Texaco wanted to streamline their fleet, and so uh, they put together the, uh, some of these tankers. I don't know how many were made, but uh, that's, what the, that's what it's modeled after. And that, that's even uh, stated on the Hot Wheels wiki. So that uh, big old bat head on the side was, uh, was really thick. It was almost like a decal, and it didn't come off with the paint. Of course, wire brush took it off because that pretty much takes everything off. This was really a good casting. It was I knew it was going to be a good one to work with. Now, kind of interesting story, too. I don't, if you've ever driven a manual transmission, because these Diamond T doodle bugs had four speeds, uh, the engine was in the back. And if you've ever driven a manual, you know that uh, you shift by either a tachometer or by sound. There's a casting line here that I'm, I'm going to have to file off. I wanted to be really careful about it. It was about the only thing I really had to file. I might have done a little wheel well work. I actually don't even remember. This brown polish is uh, a coarse polish and I've started doing more polishing. I think the key to doing really good Spectre Flame it really lies in how well you prepare the casting. Anyway, back to what I was talking about, in order to shift, they couldn't hear the engine because it was a tanker, so it was like full of gas, you know. Uh, and it was too long of a vehicle to put a, a cable because they didn't do electronics in the 30s. It had to be mechanical. So they put a speaker in the engine compartment, or I'm sorry, a microphone in the engine compartment and a speaker for the driver. Uh, I'm cleaning this with mineral spirits, and yeah, I'm not wearing gloves, so I'm getting my skin oil on it. I get that, but uh, I polished this thing and polished this thing many, many times. If I showed you everything I did, the video would probably be three hours long. 
Um, here I'm using uh, Mother's Aluminum Polish. Uh, I really like it. You can get a mirror finish with that stuff. So uh, I use that actually several times just to kind of see where I'm at and which areas I need to work on. Even the best casting, you know, you're going to have your imperfections. And, you know, I could plate, I guess, if I wanted to. And I have the stuff to do it. But I just thought this casting was good enough that I was better off leaving it alone and just polishing out the imperfections. But, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a repeating course of, uh, you know, polish clean, polish clean. Yeah, I was cleaning my fingers there. But if you work at it hard enough, you know, this is the result that you wind up with is something like this. And I got to tell you, if you're going to use a translucent paint, uh, it's pretty slick when you get it that polished that well. Uh, I, I wanted to leave the sides actually unpainted. You know, everybody always tells me, oh, you should just leave that the way it is. Well, that's actually what I want to do here. And, uh, so I taped off the sides and I'm painting the, you know, the bottom part, as you can see, and the, that top portion in Spectre Flame Red. Oh, I like shooting Spectre Flame too, let me tell you. Um, and I, you know, lately what I've been doing when I tape stuff off, if I, I get the tape off as quick as I can, I found that there's some advantages to it. This is one of them. If the, you know, I had a little bit of bleed there, and the Spectre Flame was still, um, you know, not cured so much that I couldn't just scrape it off with a toothpick. And yeah, I know on the original casting, the bottom light was white. I get that. I just, uh, I don't know. It was. I wanted it to be Christmassy, and to me, that was red. So maybe I'm wrong. It's nice when you have a little recessed area like that, though. It makes it really easy to do this accurately. And I'm using uh, Tamiya paints on this and the taillights. I use Tamiya clears. I had uh, tried the brush, and then what I did here is I went back and I wanted to see if I could do it with a toothpick. But I just couldn't get the paint to lay off the toothpick properly, so I actually went back to the brush. Very small, very, very small. And then on the grill here, you know, this is this is the tire wash I use when I do restorations and I want to black the tires up again. It's really basically just really thin black paint and it. I use it on chrome grills a lot to add definition. I know uh, some people use a product, I think it's called Citadel. Um, I don't know, I think this is kind of accomplishing the same thing. And I didn't really want it in the middle of the headlight. I just kind of wanted to put some definition around the edges of the headlight. So uh, I wiped it back off. And then this plastic piece with the uh, tank covers, which is what those are. Uh, I, w I was going to do those with my chrome pen. And I wanted the, the ridged area to just be flat black. And I hit the wheel wells while I was at it. And I have it taped off because I painted the interior with flat white. Uh, this is again Tamiya. I actually just mixed my own blue and yellow and came up with a green and uh, just kept putting on uh, additional coats until I got the the hue that I was looking for. You know if, and I, I if I would have had some foresight I would have would have ordered better decals. I made these. I don't think they're that bad but uh, the one thing about the, the tester's decal paper that I use is it's pretty thick. And the, I just have a regular inkjet printer, so usually I have to print like eight sets to get a couple of good ones. So anyway, well, let's kind of pop back a little bit to where I started. I you know, I really like the casting, and that's why I got it. I just thought it looked like it had a lot of possibilities. And uh, at the last minute, I decided to do a Christmas thing. So anyway, let's take a look where I wound up.
Okay, so let me start first of all by thanking the rest of this group for allowing me to participate. And this is in no particular order. Uh, Opa's Diecast Restorations, Outlaw Speed Shop, Fat Guy Productions in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, Scale Street Garage from across the pond, Diecast Outcast, Devil's Details Diecast, and Diecast Graveyard who put this whole thing together. So a big thank you to those guys. And I was told that there was uh, the rules were very simple. I had to use a 164th casting. Uh, I had to paint it myself, and uh, like I would ever let anybody else paint my stuff. And uh, it had to uh, be a Christmas representation of a particular character or something along that lines. Well, clearly, uh, there's this Kia dealership, and every year i got to listen to their annoying commercials where they tell me that Santa's got a brand new ride, and it's nice, and it's nice at a real, real, real low price. So that's what I got for you. Uh, hey, tomorrow we'll probably uh, be having some more of this stuff because uh, the Three Blind Mice build uh, is tomorrow. And, you know, I'll be a part of that too. So anyway, this is Time Writer. Thanks for watching. No episode of The Bench. There'll probably be one tomorrow. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you at the next video. Thumb up, thumb down, whatever you want. Uh, if you're going to make a comment, please be respectful. Uh, see you next time.